Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today. If you're new, I'm Amanda. Welcome to the channel where we are all about shattering the mental health stigma. If you haven't already, make sure you make sweet, sweet love to that subscribe button, give the bell some kisses so you're not missing any of these reactions, my vlogs about my mental health journey, celebrity interviews about theirs, or any of the other things that I create to help you with your mental health or help you help someone else with theirs. Today's reaction is a request from James Dinson, my amazing Patreon. You know how much I love and adore and appreciate you. If you haven't had a chance to check out my Patreon, make sure to do so. Link is in the description. Every single dime goes toward my mental health outreach projects. You get priority song requests. You get to jump on multiple live streams, hang out, have fun with me every single month. You get to have a sneak peek at my upcoming reactions for the channel. You get exclusive reactions that I do only for my Patreons, personalized pictures, behind the scenes stuff, and so, so, so much more. So make sure to check it out. Like I said, link is in the description. But today, James has asked that I react to This Love by Pantera. And I've had some friends that, that were really into Pantera, but I never partook in their addiction or in their in their guilty pleasures there. Uh, and I know a lot of people can't believe that I've never heard some of these songs from these older, more classic bands. I do know that they're metal. I do know that I enjoyed what I did hear, but I, I, I don't really have any recollection. But I know people have a really hard time accepting that I have never heard this music that is just so common for most people. Look, I grew up on NSYNC, okay? I, my parents listened to a lot of oldies music, they listened to a lot of country music, so I never really got exposed to metal or most rock really until my later teenage years, and by that point I had a lot of um, I was just very, very loyal. I had a lot of loyalty to certain bands like Linkin Park, so I didn't really deviate a whole lot. Uh, I'd either listen to them or I'd listen to my old school uh, 90s pop and boy bands and stuff. So, with that being said, let's dive in. Pantera, this love, first time hearing. Whoa. Whoa. There's just <laughs> so much going on there. I want to touch on it for a minute. Love was twisted, pointed. I think that she always wanted to love someone like this guy who's showing her affection, who's showing her maybe respect. This looks like a prostitute John type of scenario. And perhaps he's showing her things that she hasn't felt before. And she she wanted him to save her and she might have felt like she loved him but maybe for misguided reasons uh and maybe it was just her her twisted pleasure the things that she enjoyed in her mind she was addicted to being loved she was addicted to his attention and his affection um essentially she loved that he loved her she loved that she was getting this attention this um this pleasure be it emotional or physical. I will say though, in the in the situation of individuals who work in uh, in in sex world that that are sex workers, prostitutes do have a very high rate of anxiety and PTSD, and they're also very often exposed to abuse, violence, sexual assault, and they're used to mentally separating. They're used to faking, not just physically, but faking emotionally that they're interested and sometimes that can almost seem real. You 
Girl. Okay, we're gonna rewind, of course, to get that transition, as always, but the love thing child toy is what struck me the most there, because it kind of reflects back to an unstable, maybe unloving, possibly abusive childhood um, that has been unresolved, and they're bringing that into current relationships, into current uh, sexual activities, and that can be really damaging to, obviously, both parties, and... Um, I kind of see this as any kind of toxic relationship where they're seeing death of one party or the other, either themselves or the other person, as the only solution to escape, to truly escape. And that's really, really tragic. Um, there's the professions of love, but it's really just manipulation to stay. Manipulation to, in this case, maybe get more money, or in a lot of cases, it's just that manipulation for... Uh, for sticking around so they can have that familiarity. Uh. The part that really shattered my heart the most was seeing her write hate on the mirror, just that that symbol of self-loathing, that symbol that 
she's losing that self-esteem, that self-love, and that's that's hard to see for any person. That's hard to see someone spiral down like that. I know I've been there where you just can't find a reason to love yourself. You feel so much shame and guilt for the things that you've done, uh, regardless of what they are. And I, I think that in many ways this this mirrors my divorce, and not because I hated the person or I never loved the person, but because... It starts off as good, as most relationships do. My relationship started off really good, but it gets to a point where it crumbled. We grew apart, and I, I think that while I still had feelings, I knew instinctively that I should have left far before I did, but I ignored my instinct because I kept wanting to believe in love, and I kept wanting to believe in the other person, and I kept wanting to believe in these things, but it got to the point where... I call this the crackers analogy, where the other person can literally just be sitting there eating crackers and in your head you're going, oh my effing God, look at them in the, over in the corner eating their crackers. And it's, it's just a metaphor for every single thing they do drives you nuts, no matter how mundane, you just hate everything that they do. And it's, it's just such a, a love-hate back and forth by the end that it's exhausting. And I just want to say that this music really is just comfort and therapy for the mentally molested. And I have such an appreciation that I got turned on to this, doing this for the channel, because it does have a lot of comfort in there and people didn't see that. You know, I know that back in the day, my parents did kind of discourage me listening to metal or anything like that when I really wish they would have allowed it because they think it would have helped a lot when I was going through a lot of the mentally challenging situations that I did in my youth. Uh, but when he reached out for the camera, I just got goosebumps. That was that was really unsettling. I kind of just I kind of just felt like he was gonna crawl out of the computer screen and rough me up. And seeing as I have a really intense fear of the movie The Ring, and I have no idea why, and that scene of Samara crawling out of the TV has always unsettled me to my very core. That that imagery definitely will have me thinking twice tonight in the middle of the night. But I think it's sad when people, you know, they want to be loved, they want to love themselves, and they end up getting involved with different situations for all the wrong reasons, and they want someone to save them. And the truth is nobody can save you. You have to save yourself. You have to help yourself. People can be tools. They can help you, but they can't save you. And uh, that's, that's a really hard thing for a lot of people to realize. But I really liked in the end where um, he was saying, no more head trips. He's done. Like, the, 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 the cycle is complete. The cycle's over. And I feel like there was a lesson learned. There was a desire to move forward, to do things differently. And that's always a good aha moment to have. So thank you, James, for exposing me to this. I really enjoyed it. I will probably jump down a Pantera rabbit hole is it just crazy to me that they can have the word love in the title of the song and the meaning is just the exact opposite? I find that to be a little, a little interesting. But yeah, I think there was a lot of messages there. The symbology, I saw the wings overhead. Of course, I caught that because that's big symbology to me. That desire for protection, that desire for someone to to again save you and the truth is, is you're your own angel you're your own lucifer you're your own monica uh, i used to watch touch by an angel you're your own angel you're your own savior thank you guys so so much make sure that you give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already like i said make sweet sweet love to that subscribe button share this because you never know who might need to see it and leave your mental health stories here in the comments below that's how we shatter the stigma it's just by talking about it thanks again james for recommending this song again if you haven't had a chance to check out my patreon make sure to do so and i love you guys so 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 much Mwah.